Good evening and welcome to the programme that won't be featuring the former Director General of the BBC who's let us know he's unavailable for this series. A big disappointment to the fans of John Burt, or as he now appears to call himself, the Lord Burt. <laughs> So uh, we thank the Lord for that. <laughs> In the news this week, at Beachy Head, Michael Meacher explains what happened when he tried to save a farmer's life. <laughs> Confusion over cab bookings results in William Haig taking Robin Cook's taxi by mistake. <laughs> and in central London, there are fears that with their increasing immunity to poisons, rats are getting bigger and more confident. <laughs> On Ian Hislop's team this week is a stand-up comic who once performed at the Stavanger Humor Festivat in Norway, where he was offered the midnight slot, but sadly didn't have six months' worth of material, Sean Locke. <laughs> And with Paul Merton tonight as a Sun journalist who's just finished her first book, which means she's read one more than most of her colleagues, Jane Moore. <laughs> uh, round one features questions about the week's news and, on occasions, answers. Paul and Jane, your organised chaos. Oh, yes. The May Day riots. Um, the first lot were the anti-pollution brigade and then it became... Anti capitalist. That's one of the wombles there, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's it, with the padded wombles. You divided them in your column this week into. Uh... Spikies and fluffies. The spikies are the protagonists from last year, and the fluffies are the ones like that sort of Zandra Rhodes lady that we saw there with the pink hair, the sort of um, right. very flamboyant, um, but they claim to be peaceful. There's right. another lot, which are the thickies. <laughs> They're the ones who attacked John Lewis, which is a, a workers' cooperative store owned <laughs> by its employees. Yes. If you're protesting about global capitalism, there are better targets. Well, they, they couldn't see because they've been boarded up. Are you making excuses for them? Yeah, I think, I think they've been harshly dealt with, especially the Wombles, because, uh, <laughs> you know, I didn't know what they looked like with the fur off. <laughs> Do you know what Wombles stands for? Well, underground, overground. <laughs> and uh, anti-litter as well. Yeah. Uh, yes, I wasn't quite meaning that. Uh, the acronym Wombles. Oh, I see. I thought you meant what, they, what their beliefs were. Right. right. <laughs> I know they can turn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it actually stands for White Overall Movement Building Liberation Through Effective Struggle, is what it stands for. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. I think There's they... a T there. How does that fit in Womble? I told Wombles. you, the thickies are quite powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so how many demonstrators were there in total, the, did they reckon? About the four. And 8,000 tourists who were all caught there. <laughs> uh, there were some German tourists who were caught up in all German that. tourists? Well, mm. <laughs> so the German tourists were trapped in there. They should have sort of like formed a little sort of committee, shouldn't they? Sort of jumping over a wooden horse or just emptying sort of dirt out of their trousers. <laughs> I think a lot of people had to do that after eight hours. Yes. <laughs> and there was a Daily Telegraph reader dressed as General Custer. Apparently he likes dressing up as a vicar most, though, I read today. Well, so does the Archbishop of Canterbury. You can't, <laughs> judge, <laughs> you can't judge a man because of that. Yes. Uh, and so there weren't any sun readers out there on the streets, Oh, then? I doubt that very much, no. I think they were watching it on the telly. It's not just readers there weren't many of them, in fact, uh, reporters there weren't that many. The Mail had 20 reporters, as we can see. Uh, the Mirror had 23 reporters. Uh, the Sun had two. What, you, what happens is that you send out the juniors into the, into the actual, you know, where the action is, and then people who've been in the business for a long time think, oh, I can't be bothered. They sit in the office and just tweak it slightly and put their name first. Millions of fascist <laughs> lunatic lefties turned out today. <laughs> <laughs> The original copy says, bit of a damp squib, yeah. no one's <laughs> <laughs>
this is then the uh, May Day protest, which traditionally brings together thousands of anarchists who will stop at nothing to overthrow capitalism and change the world. Uh, although, as it was raining, numbers were down a bit this year. Uh, <laughs> the protesters' main targets were McDonald's, because they sell meat, Nike, because they sell trainers made by children, and Body Shop, presumably because they sell soap. <laughs> Ian and Sean, your extraordinary fare. The space tourist going up. And there he is, dropping in. He's an incredibly rich man who's always wanted to go into space. And the Russians let him do it, the Americans wouldn't let him do it. And, uh, oh, didn't the was... Americans get annoyed because he said he might sue if he was attacked by aliens? Because it would sort of ruin his holiday. Do you know what job he had, this yeah. guy? What's that then? Uh, I'm not going to tell you. He's <laughs> only my secret. He's a freelance astronaut, isn't yeah. he? I think that's what... <laughs> I suppose he is now, yes. Yeah. He was an investment but, manager, although he used to work as a space scientist. Yeah. So what did they find on the International Space Station when they got there? Big obelisk. Black obelisk. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're confusing it with a film. Which it was called? 2001. And what year are we in? I think that proves my point. <laughs> This is uh, the launch into space of the first fare-paying passenger, businessman Dennis Tito. Uh, outer space is set to become the new popular tourist destination, although it's feared that Germany has now developed the capability to put a towel on Neptune. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Jane. Ah, uh, yes, now this is uh, John Townend, Lord Taylor of Warwick. Ah. Ted Heath, yes. Now, this is the, uh, the ever-continuing race row. John Townend, who referred to the, uh, the mongrel society of Britain, he apologised. William Hague ragged his finger again and said, um, you know, I'll forgive you that one, but again, right. if you don't... So. Then Lord Taylor called him pathetic. And then, of course, Ted Heath, who takes any opportunity he can to have a go at, at William Hague, um, came out and, uh, and said, yes, they should be kicked out. And he's not the sort of great Tory leader that we used to have in the past. Like yeah, exactly, like, like what I mm. was. It does seem rather sort of got up about nothing in particular. Yeah. I and mean, there's always been people like Townend in the Tory party, and you just sort of look at them and say, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And what have Labour had to say about all this? Uh, yippee. Mm. <laughs> and they're even further ahead in the polls than they were when they won the last landslide election. I think the latest figures suggest that there is only going to be one Conservative left. <laughs> That's not a seat, that's in the whole of Britain. <laughs> mm. And who got away with a racially sensitive remark that you picked up on in your excellent column, obviously? Um, oh, yeah, week? Nelson Mandela. <laughs> well, it wasn't, I mean, what it was, he, he, used to, he was on um, Breakfast with Frost mm. and he was talking about coloureds. And um, I just, I thought, oh, because I vaguely remember about five years ago we were told that we weren't allowed to use that word in this country. Not in the same batch as whites. Yeah. And he was, I mean, no, <laughs> I did make that joke today in my column, thank Good. you. Yeah. Glad to see you've been reading it. No, I haven't, um, that's why I made it. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd known I shared a sense of humour with you, I might have just packed it all in. Uh, this is the ongoing race row, uh, which has engulfed the Conservative Party the day after the row broke out. The Daily Telegraph began its report. The mood at Conservative Central Office yesterday morning was black. <laughs> Probably could have phrased that better. <laughs> uh, the racism issue spread. In a recent survey, the Scots and Welsh were united in describing the English as arrogant and unapproachable. Tossers. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, in this round, Ian and Sean. Wembley Stadium. Um, it's closed, isn't it? But they're trying to build a new stadium, a new Wembley Stadium, a very expensive one, uh, a big flash, a uh, supersonic, you know, stadium fit for multi-millionaires to play football in. And uh, it, it costs so much money to build because these people obviously they need the best dressing rooms and park and old <laughs> chairs for everybody who watches it. <laughs> and it's just too much money, they can't afford to, to build it. Isn't the new rumour now that they're just going to say, oh, sod it and shrink the whole thing and make it much smaller and flog it to a Premiership club? Yes, if there is a Premiership club that's interested. I don't know if Newcastle fancy having oh. Wembley as their <laughs> home ground. Well, Man United, I mean, most of their fans are there anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is a Manchester United fan. Oh, is he? Oh, I'm so, oh, I'm so no, sorry. No, Can't no. you tell from the accent? <laughs> it's rather odd, I mean, forgive me as an outsider, that the... <laughs> of what? You're the human race? race. <laughs> I'm just saying that 
football, I mean, we're all told, is the most popular, most wealthy game there's ever been. Mm -hmm. But as soon as they are given the task of building a stadium, they say, oh, we can't do it, we haven't got enough money, and then ask the taxpayer to do it, which doesn't seem to make any sense. So they go to the government and say, give us some money, and the government says, uh, no. And they well, go, oh. How do they go again? They go, <laughs> well, I'm, this is just a rough approximation, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I wasn't actually there at the crucial meeting, but I think it was something like, ooh. <laughs> I think we quoted that noise in the sun as well. Right, how do you oh, really? spell it? <laughs> Lots of O's and an H. All right. Most words in the sun are like that, though. Aren't they? <laughs> and what's... Like the O's on the end of your paycheck. Yeah, you know, touché. Or should I say touchy? Uh, this is the uh, fiasco over the uh, National Football Stadium at Wembley. The FA are considering relocating the National Stadium to a large site just outside Birmingham, although it's currently little more than a rubble-strewn wasteland. Birmingham is, in fact, England's second biggest city. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, um, well, like Jerry Halliwell's fridge, there's nothing in it, being as it is for all. <laughs> And so to the joy of tabloid wit, two examples of finely crafted single entendres, uh, Paul and Jane, hit me website one more time. There was a, a scientist who um, had a website devoted to sort of very hard sums, physics, and uh, he thought he'd get people interested in it by, by incorporating Britney Spears' name into the, into the website, so people were... Uh, fans of hers were logging onto the site and find all this sort of very hard sum stuff about physics yeah. and things like that. Thinking they were going to see some nudie shots, probably. Uh, yeah, she doesn't do nudie shots, though, does she? I she's don't know. a virgin. I mean, yeah, she's the a virgin. The world's most <laughs> famous virgin. Surely Anne Widdicombe is the world's most famous virgin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she's very well known in America, though, is, is she? she? Not? Mm. Is she's not global, is she, Anne? Oh, I don't know. Mm. Well. <laughs> <laughs> It's about semiconductors. That's right. <coughs> um, this well, website. <laughs> if you'd logged on, you would have seen a few pictures of Britney Spears, yeah. plus a lot of stuff about semiconductor physics. Yeah. Mm. And, um, Did you log on? I'm afraid I didn't, no. I read about <laughs> it in the Telegraph. Because <laughs> they can fit semiconductor onto the page. <laughs> um, <laughs> would, um, would you like to catch a glimpse of uh, what you might have seen had you logged on? Yes, please. Yeah, show right, us the yeah. semiconductor. Go on. OK, uh, here's uh, a little bit of physics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is um, Carl. That's his name, Carl Hepburn. Uh, this is his way of illustrating parabolic functions. <laughs> well, I can see that. <laughs> Does anybody check any of these numbers? He could just be making it up, couldn't he? he might You're right, that differential is completely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, A2 1 K over H db over dx, rubbish. Just some awful. Yeah. A2 K3 over 2 mm6, pull the other one, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you try doing that, you blow your hair dryer up. <laughs> uh, yes, and there was another famous name involved in educational literature uh, this week. Harry Worth. Worth. Interestingly, not, no. <laughs> Nice to hear his name again, though. Isn't <laughs> <it>? <laughs> no, Manchester United uh, have oh, not up again. maths books. Manchester United maths books? Yeah. <laughs> well, if, it, if it takes three Ryan gigs, four hours to fill a bath, that sort of thing. Yes. <laughs> Only bananas and a bunch of grapes. <laughs> <laughs> not dissimilar. Jordan has £30 to spend if he buys a pair of shorts. Has he enough left for a key ring and a programme? Knowing their prices, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> It's a kind of mind control, isn't it, Manchester United, with small children? It's the sort of thing they usually get up to in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Brainwash yes, it, them. It's how Nazism started, of course. Ah, now you said ah. that. I didn't say that, but okay. I agree with you. <laughs> Angus says Manchester United are like Nazis. <laughs> That's the last free ticket you'll get to their ground. <laughs> David Beckham was in the, the Nazi shirt today, wasn't he? He came out, some US fan had sent it to him, and he thought, oh, this is nice and trendy. I'll wear this for the photographs of my 26th birthday. Um, and there was a picture of Adolf Eichmann on the front, mm. Hitler's sort of mm. henchman. Oh, lovely. And, and Beckham had no idea, of course. He just thought it was some fashion statement, some old bloke with glasses. Or well, did he think Hitler was like Nike? <laughs> <laughs> but hand on heart, would you recognise a picture of Eichmann? No. Right. Ian? Well, I think I would have done, yeah. Yeah, but you lived through it, didn't you? <laughs> Thank you.
rallying to poor David's defence. Uh, this is the uh, website. Poor David? Poor David, yes. Poor David, after you've described Manchester United as akin to the Nazis, <laughs> he's just we he's merely wearing club memorabilia. <laughs> <laughs> This is the website, or it was about five years ago. Uh, <laughs> the website about uh, semiconductor physics, which has received two million hits uh, since it was redesigned to incorporate pictures of Britney Spears. Uh, many physicists were firm Britney fans even before the latest website. Oops, I did it again, being something of a theme song for the chaps in the control room at Sellafield. <laughs> In a tribute to Britney Spears, one enthusiastic journalist wrote, I defy even the sternest critic to watch Britney perform and not develop a soft spot for her. <laughs> Quite the reverse, I think. <laughs> Ian and Sean, your uh, positive spin. Blair Vision. Tony Blair saying he's, he wears coming out, making a big deal about the fact that he wears glasses now. Spectacles. How, how did you get that from the title? <laughs> I just jumbled it all together and I was lucky. Uh, <laughs> But he, he, he says he made a bit of a big deal about the fact that I'm wearing glasses, as if it's uh, there's something, you know, he could have just, like, worn them and let people work out for themselves, I suppose. <laughs> he doesn't want to take any chances. Yeah, mm. yeah. And he wore them 18 months before anyway, so... In private, though? No, no, it was, a, um, he was uh, pictured in Woman's Own or one of the... One of those women's magazines One of his glasses. tougher interviews. <laughs> you, sure, you sure a colleague hadn't just drawn over his face? <laughs> <laughs> but no, he said he, 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 he couldn't... He was reading a brief and he couldn't tell the difference between billions and millions. Which explains the dome. <laughs> it was Cherie who um, told him to get them because she was so sick of him squinting in bed. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Was, he, was he at the wrong end or something? <laughs> Who'd know? Yes. There may be other reasons why he was squinting, of course. Yeah. Why would mm. that be then, Paul? Use your imagination, Angus. <laughs> <laughs> you can send that search party, I'm sure we'll find it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so how many pairs does he have? 86. He's got <laughs> Calvin Klein, yes. and then he's got some pair that he bought off the shelf, so it makes him look more like the common man. That's how he'd think about it, anyway. Oh, are they Calvin Klein? No. Oh, I can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> but I think, actually, you know, let's face facts. Everybody wears glasses. Just not people have got, a lot of people haven't got the courage to wear them and face that fact. <laughs> right. Is that true of everyone everywhere? Everyone has got glasses. <laughs> Helps me get through the day thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you've got glasses, haven't you? Haven't you? I've got glasses. Yeah, yeah. Paul's got glasses. Yeah. Sunglasses. Put them on. What do you wear them for, I, then? What do I wear them for? <laughs> um, well, I, I went to the optician once and he, and he explained to me <laughs> that if your eyesight is slightly dodgy, in, in fact, is in fact, well, I've got in one eye, it's slightly dodgy. He produces a pair of glasses, you put the glasses on, you're mm. seeing through, it's like a lens, in fact. <laughs> So you're looking at something, so it corrects the vision, because what I basically got is an astigmatism, which is one eye is trying to do this, one eye is trying to do that, so if you don't wear glasses, you're in for a long period of time, you end up getting a migraine headache. I really only need them for television. I've had them on television now, but I'm talking about watching television. <laughs> when I'm watching television, I put them on, but see, I, I sort of wear them all the time because I can't be bothered to carry around a glasses case with me. Mm. Is that exhausted, one of the most <laughs> tedious subjects <laughs> on British television? Yes, it, it, it did about halfway through, actually. Mm. Did you uh, use the will to live? Uh, I lost it a while back. Well, yeah. we're not stopping you. <laughs> Lower the rope. <laughs> uh, earlier this week, Tony Blair unveiled his new spectacles in dramatic fashion, saying, before we start this press conference, I have an important announcement to make, before putting on his glasses and apologising to the women's aerobics class he just wandered into. <laughs> Which, uh, perfect vision, uh, means at the end of that frame, it's, well, both teams seem happy to share, each experiencing the joy of six. Mm. <laughs> and so to the exciting world of foursomes, one per team this week, Ian and Sean, John <coughs> Prescott, William Haig, Elizabeth Filkin and Keith Vaz. Elizabeth Filkin is, um, the parliamentary person who looks into, um, standards among mm. MPs. And she, I think the answer is she's looked into all of these people and found them wanting. Um, Keith, obviously, is... I mean, he's ill at the moment, so we don't have to do anything tasteless. <laughs> <laughs> but when he's not being ill, he's a bit dodgy. And um, William Hague did something. I think he made a speech and didn't declare the money on the 
members' interest? A couple of things, but that's one of them. Yeah. Uh, once was that he failed to register the use of uh, uh, the gym that Lord Archer had. In really? The yes. Oh, that's right. Archer said you can come and play in my gym for free. Mm. Pathetic, the level of bribery nowadays, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and John Prescott, what did he do? Uh, it's uh, not declaring a low-rent flat. Uh, well, well, by was, his he, union. He leased it from a trades union. He yes. leased it from the union. Yeah. So she's investigated bad conduct by all of those people, and for some reason you haven't put Geoffrey Robinson in there as well. Are the lawyers having a brown trouser day out there? <laughs> <laughs> well, we just thought we could rely on you to mention it. No good. <laughs> In a recent interview, John Prescott complained he doesn't like walking alongside his wife, Pauline, when she's wearing one of those silly, bloody big hats. They're daft. Uh, clearly, it's all right for him, though, as we can see from this. <laughs> and indeed, this. Uh, Paul and Jane. Your awkward company consists of Mariah Carey, mm -hmm. Thora Heard, a Dalek, and a little mouse with clogs on. <laughs> Well, the little mouse with clogs on, that's clearly a reference to that song, uh, the mouse with clogs on, so I despair, going clip, clippity cop on the stairs. Ah, oh, stairs, yeah, stairs, stair lifts, stair lifts, heard, right? <laughs> Daleks can't go upstairs. Mariah Carey, has she got any feet? Um, <laughs> It's got to be the stairs, isn't it? Thor heard. We see her going up and, oh, I would recommend one of these for everybody. You've got to be careful, though, because they do 125 miles an hour on the top of you. <laughs> Straight out the bathroom window and you sit, you sit in your greenhouse before you know what's happened to you. Um, so it's about stairs, isn't it? Say yes, for God's sake. <laughs> Three of them don't walk upstairs, but the mouse does. Are you jumping in and claiming the points, in? Yep. Is the right answer. <laughs> Uh, yes, that's right. Mariah Carey told an interview from Q magazine, uh, who suggested doing an interview upstairs. I don't do stairs. And where are the last four surviving uh, dialects? Well, hopefully, a long way away. <laughs> <laughs> the, they're not genuinely dangerous, Sean. They're fictional. Can you say that? <laughs> There are two in the um, Museum of the Moving Image in London. Um, one has been sold to a fan, and there's one in a bed and breakfast in Wales. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and Thora Heard uh, can't use stairs, as you mentioned, um, and, uh, but advertises Churchill stair lifts, uh, oh. not Stanner. Who um, advertises Stanner, then? Oh, is it Dora Bryan? Is it Dora no, Bryan? No, she does walk in baths. <laughs> <laughs> The answer is that uh, none of them are prepared to use stairs, uh, except for the little mouse with clogs on that goes clip clippity clop on them. Uh, in a recent interview, Thora Heard explained her struggles with technology. This morning, I picked up the wrong handset to phone my daughter and opened the front door by mistake. <laughs> so, a little tip for any bogus gas inspectors in the area, try giving her a ring first. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's uh, Paul and Jane who are striving for equality. Behind us, they are 11-8. Our final missing words round never ceases to be our last. A variety of headlines plucked from their columns, including some more or fewer from this week's guest publication, the truly remarkable Cheese Reporter. <laughs> uh, you can visit their website, cheesereporter.com, uh, or email them at info at cheesereporter.com, or <clears throat> watch paint dry. <laughs> so, prepare for... April is what? Months after March. Terrific. Uh, terrific? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a cheese question. April is the cheesiest month of the year. It is from Cheese Reporter. Ooh. April is Miss Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> April is cheese time. Uh, no, April gonna... is cheese time in Picardy. Uh, in Picardy? Yeah. <laughs> Very famous song. I'm not even going to go there. April is National Grilled Cheese Month. Yeah. Oh. Is, uh, you were so close. Uh, next, Prescott Watt doomed. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> is it musical? <laughs> I can't find the one Prescott. Uh, Prescott rail plan doomed. Uh, uh, next, two salaries do nicely for what? Two people. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way God would have wanted it. Yes. Bland? Uh, Sir Christopher Bland is the right answer. He's on 500 grand for a three-day week, I believe. 
Uh, two and a half day as BBC chairman and two day as BT chairman, yeah. leaving half a day free for his paper round. <laughs> <laughs> Next test proceed on six year old what? Cheese, gotta be cheese. Um, Is it a type of cheese? Is it cheddar? Adam. Stilton. <laughs> <laughs> It is sadly a, uh, a type of cheese Brie. that we haven't got there Dairy yet. Lee. Um, Carefully. Wensleydale. That uh, laughing cow stuff. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> it's slightly more Italian, eight. Pope cheese. Dolce Lata. Dolce Lata. Uh, no, Parmesan. Parmesan is right. Yay, Fantastic. Got one, yeah. After so only obvious. half an hour. <laughs> uh, next, Bush's daughter's what? Bust? Massive. <laughs> Alcohol, it was. She uh, went into a club and drank underage. Uh, she did, yes. Underage drinks is the answer. This is Jenna drinks. Bush, uh, who was caught drinking beer, and she's only 19. What kind of a crazy bitch is she? <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, paramedics to learn what? Is it to curb instinct to kill? <laughs> <laughs> Ancient <is> cheese <laughs> remedies. Self-defence. Self uh, art of self-defence. Very good, yes. Uh, according to statistics, one ambulance man is assaulted every day, apparently. He must and be it... a very unpopular man. <laughs> <laughs> Next, wanted uh, cheesemaker for speciality what? Cheesery. <laughs> Edam Gouda. It's a hard cheese, certainly. Oh, oh that mm. makes it much more difficult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quite like Gruyere, but not. I don't seem to have wandered into who's <laughs> cheese. Emmental. <laughs> this week's Emmental. Emmental. Emmental is the right oh, well answer. Uh, Fantastic. Which uh, heavy atmosphere means at uh, the end of this dull spell, this week's April showers are uh, Paul and Jane with 12, whilst this week's May queens are Ian and Sean with 13. Yes. So, a case of Chardonnay to our winners, a case of foot and mouth to our losers. Uh, but before we put you out of your misery, the necessary evil that is our caption competition, Ian and Sean, get this. Um, <laughs> doubts over whether Miss Fiji is a man. Is <laughs> a woman, it's, surely. Yeah. That would have been better. Yeah. <laughs> Look how far apart my pockets are. <laughs> uh, thank you, Paul and Jane. <laughs> describes himself in sign language. <laughs> it's Nicholas Soames, the man on the right there, saying to him, Michael, you've got a small man's head on your left shoulder. Just brush yeah. it off. <laughs> <laughs> on which uh, informative note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Sean Locke, Paul Merton and Jane Moore. And I leave you with news that in Kensington, one of Marco Pierre White's customers regrets asking for the Lee and Perrins. <laughs> in Westminster, there are fears that the Parliamentary Committee on Alcohol Abuse is not taking its responsibilities seriously. <laughs> and as a rather good looking woman on the left, isn't it? <laughs> it's Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> <laughs> that blue dragon's going to be in luck tonight. <laughs> Presumably goose in the bloke on her left. <laughs> mm. And the forthcoming series of Animal Hospital is in doubt as the stars quibble over their contracts. <laughs> Good night. This weekend we have a summer weekend of comedy with It's Only TV But I Like It, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Next this morning we have two pints of lager and a pack of crisps for you. Well, next we have a break, then that. <laughs>